Hi everyone, it's Gina. Welcome to my channel and welcome back to my channel for all of my new subscribers, new and old. Thank you so much. It is lovely to have you here. Today we're going to make some bookmarks. I was watching a video from Creation CC and she did this video and I thought let me try and I got addicted. I have made so so many and I thought this is so much fun that I thought I would make a video and if you've never seen this you've got to try it. The first couple I think these were her compositions that uh, I was trying but afterwards I just started to create, started getting fancy with the pots, use a little metallic paint here and there. I don't know if that's a real plant. It didn't matter. It, I was just having a good time. Try to get a little elegant. I have a little crack in my pot. Then I started going crazy. It's limitless what you can do. Now this design I got um, from watching DeWinton Paper Company. Harriet, that's another watercolor channel that I subscribe to. I love her. This was a similar design. I thought I would try that. And that prompted me to just do something else with all these flowers and then just kind of wacky stuff. Then I grabbed my pen and whatever was in my head came out. I don't know what it's going to look like when I start. I just go where the paint goes or go where the ink goes. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> then I started getting back to flowers, removed the pot, and just focused on the image of the flowers and let them take over. What's great about doing bookmarks is it's such a small surface area. So you don't have to worry about filling up a big page. It can be daunting and you're not sure how to fill it up. So this little size is perfect. As you can see, I got just kind of crazy and got super fancy there with my pot. <laughs> I thought this is too much fun to not share. I hope you'll stick around, grab your paints, grab an ink pen and join me. I'm going to work on three at one time. That's typically not what I do, but I found that it works pretty well with this because I paint all the bases and by the time I get done with the third one, the first one's dry and then I can move on and I can do another segment. It seems to work, so I'm going to go with that today. I love how these came out. You see all the different colors that are mixed in with the base? Here's another one. I love how that looks. So that's what I'm gonna go with now. Now I usually start some type of brown, something along this, this row. Maybe mix with a little bit of green. And then I just add swipes of different colors. Let's see, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> I'm just using whatever's left in my palette. We'll just see how it turns out. Let's make a large dramatic pot for our first one. Okay. And I have to turn it upside down or it will never, ever, ever remotely look even. <laughs> so there's no guarantee here either, but that's what I do. So feel free to turn your, uh, your paper around if that makes it easier for you. See, it's still not, it's still not great, but that's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to come in just with a little bit of green. Okay. Now maybe a little bit of this orange. You see how I just mix the colors? Don't worry about what color it is. You know, you may make muck. You may make brown, but so what? Brown is great, so <laughs> just go, just try stuff. You know, if it doesn't turn out, then it doesn't turn out. That's okay, you won't do those color combinations again in the future maybe. So, so there I added just a little bit of blue. So I think I'm gonna let that go just like that. And we'll set that one to the side to dry. And then we'll do another one. I'll just start with my base color. Let's do a big squarish pot. Here. Okay. This has a little bit of Payne's Gray mixed in with it, maybe. 
actually I think it's quinacridone rose. Yeah, look how pretty. And a little more water. I'll spin it around and try to do this side. Uh oh, kind of fuzzy. Here we go. Got some sepia down at the bottom. Maybe on the sides too. I did more than just the bottom and sides, but that's okay. There we go. I think I want another swipe. And we'll set that aside to dry. The last one, I'm going to not do a base. I think I will do just a big flower on that one. So what I can do is go ahead and lay down the petal or the actual flower part. This is Titian Red, I believe. And let's just create some sort of flower. One. Let's do another one right here. Maybe that one's looking off to the side. Something like that. And while it's wet, I'm going to add some burnt sienna in here. This is straight from my palette. A little burnt sienna. There's a white spot there. Oh, uh oh, now there's a bigger white spot. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. And when stuff like that happens, just keep going. Just add more color. And you think, well, it, it doesn't look the same. That's okay. It's okay if it doesn't look the same. Actually, that's that's perfect. It'll add some interest into your flowers. Because I like to kind of go over them sometimes again anyway. And actually, let's pull in a different color. What is this? This is ruby. Um, can I put that? Let's just add a little bit of ruby in here. I'm going to grab a little bit of water. Yeah. You can see I'm not being careful at all. Just going in and adding some color. Let's add a little bit there. Now, I'm going to set that aside and let that dry. It looks like our first base is dry. This is kind of impression, impressionism. <laughs> As long as it looks like something, something that I might could make look like a flower by the end. And a lot of times that means using my ink pen, which is fine. I love the look. I have a little bit of blue in here, so I think a nice pretty blue would look nice. And the thing with my palette is there's probably several blues in here. <laughs> so I don't, I can't begin to tell you what color this blue is. Load up my brush. Just start making some squiggles. It's roughly in the shape of a flower. <laughs> it could be a flower, what do you think? Add a little more water. Let's go really crazy and let's add another color in there. Why not? Let's add the Titian Red. This Titian Red is it's kind of an orangey color, but I like it. And I'm going to do the same thing, except with this color. I'm just going to let my pen, uh, let my pen, <laughs> I'm just going to let my brush just squiggle and wiggle around. There we go. I'm going to set that to the side and let that dry. All right. Now this has got some of the pinks. I think I will use, what was this? This is probably quinacridone lilac, or at least it mostly is. All we do is just make some little dots. Pink, very easy. Let me bring you in some. And 
we will make some more dots. And I'm just making them bigger at the bottom and then just going up. Not perfect, not being careful at all. Let's try another one going right here. Let's have one at the top. There's some little ones coming off on the edge. All right, let's let that dry. I'm going to wait and do this one last because now that I've got the bases and the flowers, I'm going to move to the pen, and I use an archival pen to do this part. And this one will have a lot of pen work, so I'm going to let that be last. I will go ahead and start in working on this one. You probably can't see it. I can barely see it. <laughs> this Banyo Microline pen, it's waterproof, fade-proof, light-fast, and archival quality. I think I'll start with a four. And normally, I just start by outlining. You can still see that it's a little uneven. I'll grab a much smaller nib. I'll use an 01. And maybe I'll do like I did on one of the other bases and make it like a crack. So yeah, I can go ahead and use this little line here and I can just trace it. Somebody has knocked it over and it fell on its side. Now it's busted. But it's so lovely that you still want to use it. <laughs> Here, I gave him a little pot of backstory. All right, we'll leave that one alone. Something else I do sometimes is I'll use my pencil. I'm not a perfect artist. I don't just draw one line and it's perfect. I will inevitably have to erase. <laughs> but you know, if you're like that too, so what? I race and I race and I try and I try until I get something that I like or I give up <laughs> and just keep the last thing that I uh, drew. So let's see, let's have, I think I'll just add leaves. That's what I do just to lighten it a little bit. If I draw too heavy and I'm going to watercolor, I just roll it over like this and it takes off just enough to where I can still see the lines under it but if I were to use watercolor over it I would be okay. Make it a 03 to do our stem. Now I can wrap the rest of my vase around my stem. I'm going to use a size 2. I want to just loosely draw in some petal shapes. I'm not going to be exact. However my paint dried is what I'm going to use as a guide. And they're just circles, nothing fancy. I use this pen a lot. It might be running a little bit low on ink. So let me go back to the three. So I want it a little bit darker than that. There we go. <laughs> it's kind of funny looking. All right, I'm gonna do these two. Oh, there we go, I think it's kind of cute. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to go back and see if my number two will work. I'm gonna draw in the leaves. Just very basic, simple leaves. There you go. I mean, it's barely even a leaf shape. Now, just to kind of give them a little pizzazz, I'm just going to draw a line down the middle. And then on one side, I'm just going to draw a bunch of lines, but just on one side. I think I might put a couple of dots in them. Here we go. Isn't that cute? Oh, I love that, how that turned out. Now, I always like to give so it's not floating in the air, which I could have done this when I had my paints out still, but sometimes I forget. And I just take some of that base color, just lightly, and then just add a little bit of shadow. Just add a little bit of, like it's sitting on something. Um, maybe I'll put just a hint of the blue in there. 
All right, I'm gonna let that dry. Now let's do this one. Now I'm gonna start with my number four and go around the base. I'm trying to think of how I wanna decorate the base. Let me work on my petals and then maybe that'll give me kind of a better idea of what I want to do down here. I think I'm going to stick with circles, except I'm going to make these small circles. And number four is probably too big. <laughs> I would love to use the number two if it will work. There we go. Some of the circles are outside the paint. That, to me, it adds a little something. You can tell what's going on in the paint because I use such a dark color that even with the black marker, it's hard to see. Now, maybe I should have used the white marker since the paint was so dark. That may have turned out better. To get the point across, I have some of the circles outside of the paint, so all that's showing is the white. And I think that helps to kind of convince the eye of what they're seeing um, in the paint when they can't really see it that well. <laughs> now I need to draw the stem. I'll go to the number three. Now I'm going to bring these side ones to make it part of this big one. I want to finish the back. It's kind of a wacky looking pot. I think I'm going to get brave and I think I'm going to go in with some green. Now my hands tend to shake a little bit so this is kind of nerve-wracking for me. It is and it isn't. I mean if it messes up it messes up. What can you do? But who knows maybe it will be a happy accident and I'll uh, figure out something to do. Yeah, it didn't have to be perfect, but just a hint of color is really kind of all I was looking for. Actually, I think I'm going to do that with this one as well. The ones with the dots, I'm going to leave that white. I will put green on the one, the side of the leaves with the lines on them. Huh, it just adds just a little bitty touch of something. I like that. Let's see. I see this little part where I went outside the line, and I think I want to do something with that. For the decoration on the base, why complicate things? Let's just keep it simple and go with circles. Add some dots. I think we'll go to the number one. I'll just add some shading on this side. Maybe a little on the back too. Do I like that? I feel like it needs something else. I think I'll just do dots. And since these big circles have room, I can put a smaller circle. it for the base. It does look like it needs some sort of leaf or something going on on the stem. And I think what I'll do is I'll just add a little bit of shading on the inside and I think maybe some type of little barb or hmm, you know what how about <laughs> we'll stick with our circles. You know, you can't go wrong with circles. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> that one's done. I like it. Oh, look. I forgot. Just get a little bit of color. Put it down here. Here's our last one. Lots to do. I'm just going to take a look at how the paint dried and and just see if I can come up with some sort of interesting composition. Yep. 
There we go. That's the first one. Okay, Ooh. <laughs> that's what we've got so far. I love how odd the flowers look. I just kind of went with the different colors, how it dried, and we'll just keep going and just see how this turns out. Okay, pretty cool. I like that. Now it definitely needs some leaves. And I can add paint uh, for sure, but it needs something else. I think I'll use the number one and make some small leaves. Grab my little brush, and here we go. I feel like these petals right here need uh, a little more defining. Okay. okay, maybe something like that. Petals are big. I like that there's a lot of color, but I think I will add some dots. There we go. Technically this is the outside of the petal, but it looks so bare that it just it needed something. So I think that one's done, except of course for the bottom which, since this one has so much pen, I might go ahead and just do with my pen. <laughs> That's cute. I took this little ruler and just went around the edges and kind of made boxes around them. I think that just adds a nice finishing touch. And so really all that's left to do is sign it because you should sign your artwork. It just struck me to add some type of detail between the edge of the paper and the line. So if I decide to do that, take a look at the pictures at the end and you'll see if I did it or not. <laughs> it may be more ambitious than uh, what I have energy for to do this evening, so we'll see. But you could keep going and keep doodling and keep adding. You can do whatever you want. It's how these came to be. I mean, I just kept going with my line shading, kept adding layers, and I could just spend two hours on one doodling and line shading and painting, and it's so much fun. I think these came out adorable, and I hope you like them as well. Please give this a try. Don't put pressure on yourself. Mix up the colors of your paint and just enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. If you are still here, Thank you for watching till the end. Leave a comment and let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.